Hey there guys, welcome back to Freedom Frog Gear. This is Frog Frog, and the question today is, was I wrong? We are going to be taking a look at the Spyderco Manix 2 Lightweight. And uh, before we get into that, big shout out to a channel called Blade Union. If you guys are not subscribed, I highly recommend it. He's been showing some killer fixed blades lately. Uh, definitely a good channel to take a look at. Um, I'm enjoying it personally, so head on over to Blade Union. And this knife was gifted to me by my buddy Steve, so thank you Steve for sending me this knife. It's much appreciated. Alright, so was I wrong? And that question pertains to the FRN scales on this knife. Uh, we'll get into that when we get to the handle material. Alright, so here we have a nice draw point blade made with what I would call a stone wash finish. It was advertised as satin on the website, but I uh, I just don't see it. Uh, the, steel, the, the steel material is CTS BD1, which is comparable to your 14C or, you know, steels like that, 154CM, kind of in between there. Uh, so, decent steel, good entry level steel, um, sharpens up real nice, holds a decent edge, and is fairly corrosion resistant. So, good steel. Uh, we have a flat grind here. And then we have the FRN scales. Guys, I have always found these to be ugly. I thought they made the knife look cheap. And I thought it would be a cheap handle material. So, was I wrong? Well, the feeling in hand. It is very grippy, guys. I will give it that. A um, lot of texturing. You know, I think if this is done right, it's it's okay. I could see this knife being good for if it gets wet. Uh, it adds some extra jimping up along, up to the spine of the blade, which also has some excellent jimping. So, very, very grippy handle material. Uh, does not have give like I thought that it would. It's not like the Benchmade bug out, so I'm happy about that. Um, I just, I don't like the aesthetics, guys. I really don't. Uh, it's this nice translucent blue color, which I do, I do like the color. Um, but I do wish it, they would use G10. I mean, this, this, I guess it would make sense to, uh, make the knife a little lighter weight and maybe cut down on the cost a little bit. I can't see G10 being a lot cheaper, but for you guys who like this handle material, I will say I was wrong in the sense that it, it's a good handle material. It's functional, it works, it, you know, it is what it is, and uh, if you like it, you like it, and there's nothing wrong with it. This knife was made in Colorado in the USA, so for you USA knife lovers, this is a good one for you. Uh, speaking of the feeling in hand, the jimping is excellent, guys, and this knife actually has what I would consider to be a proper finger choil, and I don't say that often. I think finger choils are kind of dangerous, honestly. Yeah, you might cut yourself trying to use them, and maybe that's just me. I don't know, but this one actually has jimping, so if you wanted to make a precision cut, your your hand won't slip, so that is a uh, a very interesting and cool feature to this knife. Uh, it actually has a proper finger choil, so uh, that's pretty cool, guys. I do like that, and let's see how sharp this blade is. Pretty good, guys. Let's make another cut here, see if we can make a nice fine cut. Peanut was hard. Here we go. This is what I was looking for. It does uh, cut very, very well, guys. And let's try choking up with that little finger choil on a little peanut. Let's see here. Make a nice precision cut. So, pretty good, guys. Uh, Spider Code put a pretty decent factory edge on this knife. It's one of the sharper ones that I've gotten out of the box. So, I am very happy with that. Uh, this knife does open with thumb holes. Or the spidey hole, as it is commonly called. And uh, you can spidey flick, flick it, thumb flick it. I'm still breaking this in. This is a brand new knife, guys. Uh, so very kind of Steve to send this in. So I'm not going to knock it on the action. Spider codes do take a little bit to break in. That's fine. Uh, Spider code chose to use a bar lock for this knife, which is similar to your Axis lock or Hoag's uh, Able lock. So, you know, decent, fun, 
open uh locking mechanism. All right, so the pocket clip on this knife, we have a tip up pocket clip, which is always great to see, and it is reversible uh, for left or right hand carry. This is a wire clip, guys, so I guess that adds to the uh, lightweight aspect of the knife. That's the only explanation I can come up for a uh, clip such as this. So it is functional. It does uh, work on pants, so can't knock it. It works, right? Uh, for you lanyard guys, this knife does have a lanyard hole. So, you know, nice light, lightweight knife like this. I could see people wanting to put a lanyard on it, I guess. All right, so we have a blade length of 3.37 inches, a handle length of 4.66 inches for an overall length of 8 inches, guys. And this knife only weighs 3 ounces. So, yes, it is a lightweight knife. Uh, yes, I was wrong about the FRN. It does work fine. It is a, uh, it, it works. So, I mean, how can you knock something that works, right? It's grippy. It's not cheap. It, you know, it's okay. It's okay. It gets a pass. It gets a frog pass. The frog has spoken. Uh, so all around, guys, this is a good knife. I would recommend it if you like it. Um, you know, not much bad I can say about it. So yeah, let me know what you guys think about the Spyderco Manix 2 Lightweight. And let me know what you think about FRN. Tell me what you're carrying today. And check out Blade Union. Sorry this was a long one. Frog out.